Welcome to Simple Nursing's mini lesson series. Today we're going to be talking about hyper versus hypothyroidism. In this video, we'll be breaking down the essentials of these two common thyroid disorders, explaining the key differences, the similarities, and detailed nursing considerations to keep your clients safe and make you successful on your nursing boards or class exams. And if you're a Simple Nursing member already, I'd be sure to pull up your hyperthyroid and hypothyroid study guide to follow along as we go. Okay, first, let's dive into a brief patho of what causes these conditions, and then take a look at the signs and symptoms of each and how to treat them safely. So, the easiest way to think about the thyroid is to let the name help you. The thigh in thyroid is like a thigh master, using a lot of energy and metabolism. The thyroid generates energy and controls metabolism in the body by releasing hormones in a big game of telephone or dominoes. So let me explain. The hypothalamus releases TRH, which tells the anterior pituitary to release TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone. Then the stimulated thyroid pops out three key players. First is T3, the active thyroid hormone. Next is T4, the regular thyroid hormone. And lastly is calcitonin, which tones down the calcium in the blood by putting a ton of calcium into the bone. So again, calcitonin, simply think a ton of calcium is going into the bone. Now, if T3 and T4 levels are too high or too low, we have a big problem. For hyperthyroidism, think high energy and high metabolism caused by high T3 and T4. On the other side, for hypothyroidism, simply think low for hypo, low energy and slow metabolism caused by low T3 and T4. Now moving on to signs and symptoms. Everything that is hyper will be high and hot, and everything that is hypo will be low and slow. Now first, let's talk about hyperthyroidism. With hyperthyroidism, this is also called Graves disease, which I call Gaines disease, because we gain a lot of energy. The overactive thyroid gland produces too much T3 and T4, leading to high metabolism, cellular activity, and energy use. So simply think, everything is high and hot with hyperthyroidism. Now for signs and symptoms, starting with vital signs, the blood pressure will be high, we'll have a high heart rate with palpitations, high temperature, including sweating, and the other organs will be high as well. So high GI tract with diarrhea, high mood with anxiety and always on edge, and even heat intolerance. Also, to remember a few classic signs that the NCLEX loves to test about, think of the G in Graves' disease. G for grape eyes, known as exophthalmus, and the next G is for golf balls in the throat known as a goiter. Now, in terms of treatments, when the thyroid is super high and amped up, we simply treat it by slowing it down or killing it with antithyroid medications. So the key medications that kill the thyroid, first up, methimazole. Next is PTU, which I say puts the thyroid underground. It simply slows down the thyroid. And next is SSKI. Now, in severe cases, we might need a big gun medication like RAIU, radioactive iodine uptake, that simply destroys the thyroid in one dose and it's very toxic. Or we can simply use surgery like a thyroidectomy. Now moving over to hypothyroidism. Remember, with hypo, simply think it is low. It's the exact opposite than hyperthyroidism. The underactive thyroid doesn't produce enough thyroid hormone, so it causes low metabolism and slow cellular activity and energy. So signs and symptoms are really simple. With hypothyroidism, everything will be low. Low energy, low metabolism, which leads to weight gain and water gain. Low digestion, which leads to constipation. Low hair, known as alopecia, or even hair loss. Slow and dry skin turgor, and even cold intolerance. Also, low mental status, like forgetfulness. Low mood, which can be depression. Even low libido or fertility. And lastly, is irregular or even no menstrual periods. So for treatment of hypothyroidism, there's one main drug that you'll need to know for all your exams, and that is levothyroxine. Simply think it leaves thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, in the body. So to help you remember the key points of levothyroxine, we simply use the memory trick, levo. 
L is for lifelong therapy and long onset. Remember, there is no cures here when we're replacing hormones. So it does require regular monitoring and dose adjustments just to make sure we have therapeutic range inside the blood. E is for early morning and empty stomach. We always tell clients to take it first thing in the morning, daily before breakfast, and never at night. Because remember, this levothyroxine will leave T3 and T4 in the body, which will increase energy and make it hard to sleep. Next is V for very hyper. We have to report signs and symptoms of agitation, confusion, and high blood pressure, or even high heart rate, because the overcorrection can cause a thyroid storm. Now, very lastly is the O in Levo. We say, oh, the baby is fine because it's pregnancy safe. Okay, now that we covered these conditions, let's think about the top things that can kill our client first and what to monitor to keep your client safe. For hyperthyroidism, the safety consideration is to watch out for extreme highs, that thyroid storm, which can kill first. So for thyroid storm, we have to think agitation and confusion are the earliest signs. I'd be sure to write that down. And extremely high temperatures, high heart rate, and high blood pressure. This will kill our client. Now on the opposite side, for hypothyroidism, the safety consideration is to watch out for extreme lows with hypo. This is what's known as myxedema coma. So we see low respiratory rate, which is a major risk for respiratory failure, which can kill the client. So be sure to write this down. We have to make sure that we have a trait kit at bedside. Now we can also see low blood pressure, low heart rate, and low temperature. And for both hyper and hypothyroidism, be sure to teach clients about the importance of taking medications exactly as prescribed. Next is to keep follow-up appointments and how to spot side effects. And very lastly is the importance of lifestyle modifications. All right, that wraps up our breakdown of some key points about these thyroid conditions. If you want to go beyond this video, our Simple Nursing membership has extra resources like detailed study guides, in-depth videos, and practice quizzes focused on hyper and hypothyroidism so that you can be fully prepared. Sign up with the link right here for access. And don't forget to like this video and share it with a classmate. And also subscribe for more nursing content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.